It's everyone's favorite show! Alright, what's up, Jay Barn? Hey, Are you here? I'm here. Alright, Jay Barn, thanks for coming to uh, everyone's favorite show. How's it going, brother? It's going. It's good. Good. It's been a good day. Uh, it's yeah. beautiful outside. Yeah, it is, actually. It's a rare, nice day me. in the thanks month of May me. in Indiana. Yeah, thanks for coming down. <laughs> it's almost <laughs> nice enough for a, a natural disaster, no you shit. know, to speak of, it, to put some emphasis on today's topic. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, Jay, uh, Jay sent me over this. Uh, let me get up get up here so jay sent me over this document i guess and uh why don't you just go ahead and explain it uh Tell us what it is here. so not to put the, the name to change the names to protect the innocent um this was put together you know a small town uh kind of town hall you know what are we going to do if we have a natural disaster or something like that what, what, what are, are you prepared so we put together this list of things to have in a, a personal bug out kit or the reasons why you'll need him and then a hundred items to disappear first in the midst of a natural or man-made disaster okay so the three go ahead the three sections here is the assumption sheet you know so, i mean we could just number one communications downs no phones no radios. Yeah, so here, the assumption seat, let me do it real fast. The assumption seat in the uh, subtitle, what if one or more of the following took place? Are you prepared? So, what well, you know, yeah, no, that's fine. I just want to make sure that everybody's, you know, up to speed with what we're talking about here. So, as he lists through these, just think about if this happened are you ready for what the hell's going down or is it going to drastically upend your life which i mean it's going to drastically up in up end your life one way or the other but are you going to be able to get by and survive and yes. so yes. go ahead and and uh, just to add to that i mean before we go through these um what I, i'm no expert you know and i don't think you have to be an expert to actually be prepared you know you don't have to be bare grills <laughs> drinking your own piss yeah <laughs> to make it through this two weeks without water or electricity that is very possible, but very, uh, you know, it's a, it's a reality, uh, that, uh, could definitely take place. And, you know, it, it's not the doomsday scenario you're thinking, yeah. but imagine a week or two weeks without a, without a shower. Yeah. Shit could happen. People are, people get a little, get a little upset, you know, civil unrest. I mean, so So, go so ahead. So, the, the second, I guess, part of this is the, what, what, you know, what, what, do you, what do you need? Yeah. You know, what's essential here? So, let's just look at what they got going on here. So, we've got the personal bug out kit, backpack. Okay? So, obviously, you need a backpack. Great. Everybody, everybody likes a good backpack, right? And what do you need in this thing? Water. Water. Uh, they got, uh, oh, water filter kits. Okay, here's a huge one purification tablets yeah okay so so let me know what you think about this but would you rather carry 20 gallons of water or you know uh, some water some water purification tablets well and that right? that i think kind of all depends too because uh do i have a vehicle am i able to get around can i carry fine. so In i mean scenario every it depends the though most you know non-invasive attack if, if we were to say it was an attack, not a natural yeah. disaster, is the EMP blast, mm -hmm. the electromagnetic pulse. Yeah, but we, I don't think anybody's even perfected that yet, have they? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Have it's been they? Perfected. It's been perfected. I don't know. Yeah, I just haven't. I don't know that I've seen. It's atomic. Uh, basically, what happens is if you supposedly, and we, we can cut this out, fact check it later, <laughs> it's uh, uh, if you explode an atomic bomb in the upper atmosphere, 
it will create an electromagnetic pulse that will destroy every fucking transistor, every phone, yeah. every satellite. Blink to that. You're done. It's down. Okay? And then, so what do you do at this point? You can't go on Amazon and order your fucking tent just yet. So. Well, yeah, you've got to be prepared for that shit to happen. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, so, um... Okay, so yeah, back to the water thing. So yeah, no, I mean, that's fine, though, because, I mean, that's part of the deal, part of the discussion, though, is, so if you have a vehicle, let's say it wasn't an MP, EMP thing, whatever, and you've got a way to carry the water, I mean, you're going to want to carry as much as you can. Absolutely. Because it's a, purifying water is time consuming. True. So either you use, like, uh, chlorine, um, iodine, uh, these other tab types of tablets and then or a, and a filter which you should always have several different ways but it all takes time sure. to get hydrated absolutely. and if you're on foot you want to carry as I much mean, as you can absolutely as much as you can yeah i'd rather not carry a tarp last, and not a tent than not carry water it's, right it's the, so but yeah so on here it says two one quart canteens with cups and covers water filter kit and water purification tablets which yeah tailored your needs yeah, yeah, exa- yeah, yeah, and it says, you know, customized to your individual needs. So if you think you'll need more water than that, by all means. If you're planning on carrying a bunch of beer with you, just carry <laughs> supplemental carry- water. Absolutely. You know? If that's all you need, you know, take yeah. it to your needs. Go ahead, next. First aid kit. Yeah, did all we right. talk about the food? Uh, we didn't. It says six days of MREs, 12 units plus extras. So, I mean, I guess I'm assuming the MREs are meant to just get you to your caloric needs and uh, nothing else. So (laughs) hopefully you'll be lucky enough to be somewhere where you can supplement it. What would be your ideal, like, like bug out food? Like, what would you, it's going to have to be dry. There's going to be a whole lot of save in here. I don't know. I mean, if I were prudent, I'd be uh, dehydrating food constantly because I like dehydrated fruit and jerky and shit. But I'm not. You know, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm really, I'm really lax myself. I'm, you know, I kind of, <laughs> if some, this shit really went down, I'm not prepared. That's right. I'll be honest. I'm not. And you got to think, uh, you know, like. I mean, I've got a few guns, but only a limited number of rounds. I, I, I don't keep a ton of rounds. It's interesting now. About I mean, a thousand rounds total, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. It's not enough for anything serious. It's just, yeah, it's just interesting now that, you know, 25 years ago, it was just me. You know, and I just grab a pack. You know what I mean? It's like maybe just you and one other person or something, and you just grab your pack and go. But now, but now we have like a wife and kids. And, oh yeah. You know, I think I think, and I guess it all takes us back to the whole communal thing. Is you know, do we wait? Well, back to it. But we were we weren't we, we were, were talking it. about it before. We were, we were it. talking about it before the show. We were talking about six days of MREs. <laughs> That's what we're just talking about. Extra. So twelve units plus extra. Tailored so yeah. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I would do with that. I don't even have six so days worth of food. So your antibiotics on this next one, kids. No shit. <laughs> so yeah, first aid kit next. <laughs> I, I always had this fear, like, and this, this one right here is like, if I had a first aid kit, I I would hold back some like you know unused antibiotics throughout the throughout the time that yeah. doctors prescribe you antibiotics because but you've got to take all your antibiotics or it doesn't that's work true. I, I think i think i say pain I, medicine I, think some, yeah, I mean absolutely. you know because i'll take it for a day or two and be good absolutely. i took off the end of my thumb last year and used it for like two days and had like eight days worth in the cabinet i feel like if you i feel like the worst thing that probably happens in that situation without medical treatment is infection yeah fuck right what a way to go yeah, you don't want to. All right, moving right along to tools. Well, first aid kit. You <laughs> oh, didn't yes. really. So here, their suggestions is uh, wash towels, soap, potassium iodide tablets, gas masks, spare glasses, anti diarrhea tablets, stool softeners. So you need to cover both ends of the spectrum there. <laughs> Iodine, first aid items, and then, you know, tailor to your needs. So next, I think the most important probably is what type of tools are you going to take with you? Um, would, to have readily, you know, at hand. I would like to hear your. So I've got, tools a, I've got a little to. bug out pack, and it's not. I mean, it's just, it's basically the pack I take with me when I'm hunting public lands yes. and I'm out away from shit. Absolutely. So it's what I need, and I've got a hatchet, 
uh, that I carry with me all the time. I've got my pocket knife. I keep an extra knife in there for when I'm hunting this, uh, my skinning knife yeah. with a gut hook. Um, I've got extra, like two pair of socks, extra pair of underwear, uh, rain gear that I keep in it. And then I keep a, a little emergency pack with fishing line, hooks, and a blanket. I always take, when I'm out there, I take two canteens of water with me. So it's, Absolutely. you know, like 64 ounces of water, uh, a few granola bars, and that shit's always, you know, Sorry. in my bags, yeah, you know, and, um, you know, there's a few other, you know, I carry, always carry a lighter. I always carry matches. I always carry flint and steel when I'm out there so that I can have you a lot, have you a lot of make luck fire. With so steel. Do what? Have, have you had a lot of luck with the, the flint and steel? Oh, I mean, when I've needed it, I don't yeah. usually use it. I've done fire by friction, you know, yeah. so I've, you yeah. know, <laughs> spinning it with, spinning a little spindle yeah. with a bow remember, into a baseboard. Witnessing that. that was yeah. Crazy. So, I mean, I, I've, you know, I could survive, but it's a matter of, you know, I live in the city, so, I mean, if shit really hits the fan, you've got to get out of the city. Absolutely. And I don't have a combat vehicle or anything, so, so you're gonna even, even getting out of the city. And then you add into it, though, when it's, like, providing for my family, so I don't have enough. Well, you yeah. should have, a like, a like a big trash can on wheels that has everything you need that you could just wheel into the back of a big-ass Jeep on a lift to get the fuck out of town when shit hits the fan. <laughs> That's what you should have. Yeah, absolutely. I don't have that. <laughs> yeah, who does? But, you know, I should have the 12 guns in a case that rolls out there, throws in the back. That straps to the back on one of those yes. fucking tailgate yes. deals that goes into your trailer hitch. So, But, no, I'm not ready, so yeah, I'll be yeah. the first to it. But, I mean, I mean, tools, you know, it says here like a belt knife, machete, multi-tool. Folding shovel with cover, and that's a good one. I didn't, even, you know, folding shovel is a good one. A tube of super glue, which is useful for cuts, all sorts of shit, and a small roll of wire, 25 feet. And then I'd add to that, you know, I've got a walking stave, and I've got uh, 50 feet of rope strapped around that, which, yeah, you know, when good. I'm hiking, I take that with me too. Yeah, so I've got the rope. Handy. Yeah, and then here's the clothing items, which I, yeah. Yeah, let's just be real. Yeah. Tell me about this one. I mean. You gotta have some boots. Uh, Preferably waterproof, on you know. Absolutely, gloves, camo hat. I like this yeah, one. and it's underwear is important issue. too because, uh, like, when you're talking about socks, you gotta have the right socks for the climate. Yeah, because this could happen in dead of winter. Yeah, you know so I mean? you've got to yeah you've got to have the right socks for the climate, and you've got to have some. And you're, and you're wearing green camo. Yeah. So you're you're visible. Yeah. Big time. So. And you want two you, you want two uh, layers of socks too. You know, I always wear. A, a, a blended sock, polyester blended sock, a real thin sock underneath of my thick socks under, when it's winter time in my big boots. And it, uh, you know, helps to keep you from, it kind of wicks the moisture away from your foot, so it keeps you from getting cold after you sweat in your boots. I feel like you'd have, some, if something like this did happen, uh, you'd have, you'd be doing a lot of walking. Just plan on Oh, yeah, plan for on sure. Doing a lot of walking. I mean, you can only get so far with the vehicle if shit hits the fan. I mean, you know, it's like Walking Dead. The roads will be covered with shit. That's why you got to have yeah, an under. Yeah, roads are done for. Yeah, you got to have an off-road vehicle, yeah. and then you know, gas is only going to be viable for so long oh, if yeah. shit really hits the fan. Yeah, yeah. But we're talking about you know short term, I guess. So, um, so how what, long would it take you to run out of gas in your vehicle? A week, two. D well, Max. if shit hits the fan, it would You're be two days <laughs> or a day. <laughs> you know, if I'm trying to get the hell away from civilization. <laughs> I do have about a it's not going to go that like far. A quarter at all times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, shelter. I like this one because I feel that. Uh, I I just feel like a natural like if something you know it, it, over the two three week mark, it, you know the stuff's not you know the, the. You know the systems aren't coming back. Um, I feel like. I feel like I would go for cover in the woods of some sort. You know what I mean? I start heading towards the forests. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, Get definitely. A fire, tent, base camp set up of some sort. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it matters where you're at. Yeah, I don't think it matters where you're if at. If I had to leave the city, because I think this inside the 465 loop would, would be like the worst place to be. In oh, yeah. The situation. Like that. Well, that's the thing. You because have all the to... resources are just, that's it. You know what I mean? It, that Your local Quickie Mart has all the resources that are in that area. That's it. And those are going to be gone, you know, after the first week, those will be gone. You know what I mean? Uh, the Walmarts will be gone. They'll be raided immediately. Yeah. You know, so. So you kind of, kind of, 
And, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, is, is Indiana still, you're not allowed to collect rain barrels? Um, I, I don't, I'm not 100% sure. So I did just check, though, and it looks like a nuclear blast trigger can trigger an effect called an electromagnetic pulse. So it sounds like that would probably, a bomb in the atmosphere probably would, the reason, I guess did, the ca- reason. at the very least, cause a disruption over a large area. True. Um, what was the next question? What were you just asking me? Oh, rainwater. Can I collect yes. rainwater in Indiana? Indiana? Yes. Go ahead. No, you're good. So I was uh, uh, just curious. I, I looked up a couple things here. Um, a rain harvesting, rainwater harvesting is legal in Indiana. It is legal. Yes. Perfect. Perfect, yeah. guys. Okay. So there you go. Beautiful. Yeah, we've harvested rainwaters in our tarps. We'd set up buckets under them when we were camping up in Minnesota because we had to filter all our water up there. Because yes. you couldn't even begin to carry enough water for a whole week, so you just start, you just plan on filter. You carry what you can and then filter the rest because yes. you're carrying in supplies and gas for the stove and everything else for the whole two weeks. So, uh, clothing items, we were fucked off on that. Okay. Uh, I think we pretty much got it. Safety pins, sewing kit, a belt. Weather appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Definitely weather appropriate. I mean, if you're going to have a bug out pack, you should be prepared for any. I mean, depending on where you're at, you should be depending, prepared for any. Oh, sorry about that. Should be prepared for any uh, season. Just another quick note here. Indiana scoring three out of ten with disaster relief services. Yeah. Scored back in, that was, that was in 2019. That was in. Uh, so that was this year. Yeah. Oh, well, fuck. That's bullshit. Yep. Fuck Indiana, right? So, you know, it's interesting. It's like, what, what kind of disasters would Indiana have? How, how does this affect us? You know what I mean? We have tornadoes. So pretty we big. definitely have tornadoes. But another interesting one is... Flash floods. Is that Indiana sits near two powerful fault lines. Um, the Madrid seismic zone and the Wabash Valley oh, yeah? seismic zone. Huge. And they're right, they go right into Illinois. Yeah. The Wabash Valley seismic zone. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty interesting here if you check out this picture here. All right, let me see that. Interesting, those little red blobs there. Oh, yeah. So, but, you know, we're basically ones at the so- southern corner, southwest corner of they the said, state. They said they're, they're, they're pa- more, uh, just as powerful to affect central Indiana. Yeah. If on a major one. Wow. It definitely affect us. But we haven't witnessed that in our lifetimes, so we don't know. No, but they just but had, it could happen. So in Illinois, yeah. Uh, speaking of that, uh, Wab- the Wabash Valley seismic zone just had activity in 2017 in Illinois. There we go. If you just can, we'll just move on here. So okay. Really yeah. So um, the next thing on the list, the uh, personal bug out pack is shelter. Oh, here we go. Here we go. City of Illinois, 3.8 yeah. earthquake in uh, southeastern Illinois. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. interesting. You don't think of earthquakes. And, and um, the very next Tuesday, a 7.1 earthquake in Mexico. Yeah. So related, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Well, I don't know. Who knows? All right, so you want to talk about shelter now, or you want to shelter. talk about some more earthquake shit? <laughs> Whatever, man. I want to talk about EMP. Let's do EMP. EMP blasts. Yeah. Well, I mean, that would fuck your shit up for sure, dude, Absolutely. if that happened. Everything's fried. Yeah. And, and, uh, your microwave, and your phone, your car, it's the, all fucked. The whole land, the, the city that you bombed, or the cities that you bombed, are, are not contaminated for the next 200 years with radioactive. Yeah, you just go in and wipe them out and so build new shit. In. Yeah, so you yeah. just go in and cripple them. Sorry, Fox. Right. You're out of here. <laughs> yeah. So it says here a two-man camo tent. I think even if you have a family that's bigger than that, the small camo tents would be best way to go rather than cabin tents. Like you would have them all, like if you had yeah. six people have five, five tents, tents or Absolutely. four tents, you know, Absolutely. one for one or two for just gear and then everybody else doubles yeah, up yeah. in them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And uh, duct tape, uh, tarp, and a hundred, hundred foot of rope. Uh, I don't know. Parachute cord always seems to be nice and useful for a lot of shit. I would think you would probably want to have some toe straps and some heavier stuff just in case. But, I mean, it really, like I said, if you're traveling on foot, you're not going to be carrying 
Uh, well, you'll carry, yeah, you'll carry parachute cord. You ain't carrying heavy rope. True. Hunting. Here we go, man. You, I know you and, yeah. and your brother are the fucking experts on this one. Well, not I'm not an expert, an amateur, but so a fishing kit, gill net, firearm with ammo, gun cleaning kit, binoculars. I mean, I can't disagree with any of that, but you know, I would add the bow, obviously, because I can reuse my shit. The point of this exercise, yeah. of this this doc, this uh, this uh, document or, or whatever you want to call it, is um, is to get that red pen out. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously not yeah. comprehensive. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just kind of a guideline or a, uh, or in this case, a conversation starter. It gets you yeah. going on ideas or whatever. So, you know, definitely a bow, firearm, multiple firearms. I mean, you're going to want a handgun, a shotgun, a rifle. And that's the whole point. If you can't, if you can't go with a vehicle, you're going to be very limited and you're probably going to want to stick with you know a sh- like, like yeah pr- probably a shotgun with some different but the shotgun ammo is heavy a handgun's sure. got lighter ammo and the gun's lighter uh, and a rifle's pretty heavy but the ammo is a little lighter than shotgun ammo the bow is pretty li- you know i got yeah, a traditional bow it's pretty light but helpful. yeah <laughs> well i mean you're probably gonna have to defend yourself from other people and sure. situ- to be yeah, honest person, you know? yeah. yeah right so i mean and that's the thing i mean it's part of it you know, a, an assumption of all of this needs to be that you've got some type of a community of people who you can work with because one or two or four people, if shit really hits the fan, you're probably not going to get along. You need to, yeah, dark, yeah, you need to have a group of people. So, all right, hunting, uh, communication and navigation. All right, Jay Barn, go ahead. <laughs> well, it says, uh, well, this on here, it says uh, radio, AM, FM, shortwave radios transistor batteries uh gone you know so basically you're gonna have some and and the interesting thing is uh my uncle talked to me about this briefly was um he said that in some situations you um should keep one of the one or two more of these with an extra cell phone in a uh in a grounded metal box yeah. Just really interesting. This is a little thing about communication because he says if anything like that does happen in most situations, it would short, you know, either the power down or whatever, something like that. It, would, it wouldn't be able to short out those those two items. Or okay. But anyways, as far as this goes here, um, it, communication, this is interesting. Uh, the flashlight, the signal mirror, yeah. pad and paper, pencils, candles, compass, map, Magnifying lens, etc. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is huge. This is huge. Yeah, I carry a um, signaling mirror and a compass too. I mean, that's part of something you got to have everywhere you go. I mean, yeah, I mean, but I mean, I was lucky enough to be in scouts and kind of got prepared for that at a young age. Or like the first a, person that told me that they carry a signaling mirror. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> like you know, that. with like when I'm out mirror. doing that shit, yeah, I don't carry one in my car. Yeah. But I don't leave the city most of the time. But anytime I'm leaving the city, for the most part, I got my bag with me, and it's got all that shit in it. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I should just throw it in my car and leave it there all the time, but I don't because my car is small. I need room for other shit. <laughs> There's your magnesium fire starter. Yeah, Survival supplies. Matches. Survival matches. So. Water, waterproof matches. I, I like that idea yeah. a lot. And I mean, th- I think three means of fire no matter what, all the time. Because, you know, that's what separates us from the apes. It's fucking fire. If you ain't got True. fire, you ain't got shit. Yeah, the morale's gonna go way down. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You guys are fucking cold and shit. Yeah. Well, uh... So that's the personal bug out pack. Um, You know, like I said, that's just a guideline. I'll try to find a way. I'll probably post these, um, the PDF here on uh, Twitter at Josh underscore Rhines or on Instagram. I probably can't do it on Instagram. I can probably post a link to some Google Docs or some shit, though. Uh, I'll work it out for you. So you can check it all out and you can go off of that yourself, you know, and like, you know, tweet me. You want to hand out your Twitter handle? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Leave your comments. Jason, what? uh, Jason Barn at, uh, yeah. At Jason Barn. At Jason Barn. Okay. So yeah. Uh, you want to tweet us with any comments or any additions to this, you know, whatever. Um, we'll see what happens. So next, uh, the next part is the assumption sheet. So this is, so you've got the personal bug out kit. 
So now you've got the personal bug out kit. This the assumption sheet Why? is yeah. What if one or more of these things took place? Are you prepared now? If you've prepared your bug out kit properly, you should probably be prepared for most of this shit. So let's see what happens. That's correct. That's correct. Go ahead. Uh, so we did the first one. We got we got really sidetracked here. Communications down. So no no cell phones. No. No phone lines. Cable, no radio, radio repeaters. Yeah, the radio repeaters are like a. He's a big radio ham radio guy. Yeah. So he hears a lot of interesting chatter on the, uh, the east and west coast. Yeah. He's a big. So just assume all of that shit's down. <laughs> that it, not happening. Yeah, all right. Sure. Good luck. You can talk to whoever's close to you, and that's it. So how long could you go without your cell phone? What do you think? You think? I mean, whatever. I mean, you'd have to, right? Situation. So the question is, is why can't you? I mean, what do you? Okay. So here, I keep maps around because that's exactly, that maps is a huge. That's, yeah, because I feel like uh, the biggest problem with the cell phones is the reliance on GPS. True, I, and that's funny you say yeah. that because uh, I have for years, but just recently in the last like probably like five to six years, I, I like if I GPS something, I look at the map now yeah. and just look at the map, look at the map where you're at on the map without using the oh turn left here, right, turn right here, you know. So I try to look at the map and say, okay, it's gonna be a familiarize minute, yourself you know, with the yeah. surroundings. Because, yeah, you can just, like, blind yourself into there and be like, man, I got to use GPS to get home. It's like, you just fucking drove there 45 minutes ago, yeah, asshole. It's sad. It's sad the I've fuck, been, cuz? I've absolutely been yeah. there. Absolutely horrible with directions. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully I'm getting better, you know, in my mid. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. In midlife. I'm getting fucking I'm old. Fucking awesome now, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when I did service, I just had a map book. You oh, know, yes. city street maps, and you had to look everything up, find your way. I have seen those maps yeah. before, and I, I definitely like And, you know, I've awesome. used... Awesome I used atlases for all my uh, trips before. You know, I've been in a lot of places, and been you know since ever since I was you know eighteen or nineteen, I've been wanting to travel places. So I always had to use atlases. Then now I just use a fucking GPS. I'm lazy as shit. I get there, I'm like, oh great, how the fuck did I get here? <laughs> Damn it, I keep hitting the table. Sorry, folks. That's annoying. But, um, okay, so communications yeah. down. So no electricity on the map thing, real quick. Well, okay. Is um, my uncle. Christmas, yeah, nineteen, maybe ninety one. Yeah, you know, I'm like eleven years old. All right, we're all having a good turkey dinner, uh -huh. you know, or and, and some ham for uh, for for uh, Christmas there. And so we all eat, and now it's present time. He always brings us some presents. Like, very cool, very cool guy. And he uh, he got he got us this huge map, big road map of Indiana. I mean, it's like as big as our like wall in our uh, in our living room. You're right. And he hangs it up on the wall. And he has he has the highlighted uh, escape route, bug out route to his property, highlighted on the map. Yeah. You know, with with four sixty five marked out as you know the, the dead zone. Yeah. <laughs> do not be. Do there. not you enter. Get, do not get out of this zone. Is, uh, yeah, it's yeah. the last place you want to be. You know, he said after everything's out for more than two weeks, get out. Yeah. Get out because it's not coming back for a little while. But uh, at, at any rate, <laughs> so I just thought I'd throw that in there. So I've always had this this consciousness consciousness of like uh, like you know just being prepared just in case. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's an you know it's an important skill that's lost, and that's why I, you know. I I think it brought it all back to the camping thing. You know what I mean? When, when I, we went on a few camping trips. I'm like, yes, dude, I'd love camping yeah. for a camping kit, but for a camping trip because you always got that. You know, how, what am I going to do with this? Am I yeah. Do this. What if I get this? You know what I mean? So. I, I, I always found it. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, that's, you know, I always, I just love being outdoors. So I spend, you know, one of the things I want to try to do in the next couple of years is build a, a cedar strip canoe. Oh, yeah. That'd Why the fuck not, That'd man? I made everything yeah, else. Why? Total, yeah. Uh, ability. Yeah. And they, they're so light, dude. There's like 60 pounds for a 16 foot cedar strip canoe. Oh, yeah. You can throw it on your shoulders and carry it. Who gives a shit? So, they, so like a template, they, probably, they have to have a template. Oh, dude, so check that. They've got them all over the place. But this guy I work with has the templates, and he has. we have access to a CNC, so he cut them oh out. Oh, my God. And, and it's, out. Yeah, and it's oh, cheap because it's scrap wood that would have been thrown away anyway. Oh, my goodness. So they get cut out, so I just got to totally. get the material, and then you uh, cut the material down to about you know a quarter or five sixteenths inch, then plane it down to three sixteenths. Yeah, strips like 
uh, inch wide or whatever. Thinner ones for the bottom where they really got to bend tight and shit. Mm-hmm. But then you run a bead and a cove on them so that they nestle into each other. And then, so it's all nice and tight. And then you put fiberglass over the outside and the inside, clear fiberglass, so you still see all the wood. And then on the bottom, you put two layers of fiberglass, so it's got a little extra in case you're scraping on shit or whatever. Wow. Yeah, so. so what, what but you, it's time and for? money, you know. So what do you want to, what do you hope for, like a 25-footer? No, I want to just build a 16-footer, something 16 I can, footer. something I can have. I mean, I'd actually like to build a 15-footer that I could use as a solo canoe, because. I just, you, you know, three people on a 16, right? yeah, you can, I guess, I guess that's yeah, size. I mean, I've taken my kids in the 16 well, several times. I mean, it'd be nice to have two 15 and a half footers so that I yeah. could have one for the wife and one daughter and one for me and the other daughter. There you go. There and then I could, they're small enough. I could just throw my seat in the center, like a spare seat in the center and take one by myself if I wanted yeah. to. Almost just light it up for one guy. Yeah. Same. That's what I'm saying. Like a 15 and a half footer I could do on my own. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, that'd be cool. So, what were the fuck? Okay, so, what were you doing? Th- no two. electricity. <laughs> Shit, we talked about, went off on a tangent there. <laughs> so, what's your favorite kind of boat? Since we're, we're talking favorite about boats kind of real boat? quick. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I don't even know the name of them. Uh, I'll probably look them up. The, the, I like the old wood. Yeah. Like the old wood fucking boat looking. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's the 70s. Yeah. Starcraft or some shit, I think. I mean, there were a few people who made them, but yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Um, the most famous one is. Uh, the second. I got there you. Here. A, uh, Keep going. <laughs> there is a, uh, a one uh, or two creators of that. But, anyways, so. We're moving on to boats. Boats. We're moving off boats. Moving Just off go boats. back to the electricity. <laughs> no electricity. All right, substitution. Substation's out. Yep. The lines are down. down. That's it. Yeah, right. you're fucked. Protest. You got nothing. Yeah, it's not even just a transformer that could be fixed easily. The whole substation's down. Nobody's coming to fix it because you're fucked. Blast. <laughs> you're welcome, everything's asshole. Fucked. Everything's fucked, Julian. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> there we go. Number three, there's no water. Yeah, broken pipes, pumps are down, so you got to find it somewhere. Yeah. You ain't going to find it in the city because everybody else is going to be there already. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, any, any, the, the water plant will be uh, definitely taken. Yeah, everybody already beat your ass there, man. <laughs> Shit. Group mobs there. Hey, uh, we're approaching 32 minutes into the podcast here, and uh, we're going to take a real quick break. We'll be right back with you. Hey, we're back. Um, we left off. We were at no water. Point number four on the assumption sheet. No sewer. Lift stations are out and broken pipes. So, I mean, we, I think we've already assumed. I mean, where are we? I mean, we've already assumed that if the first thing happens, we're the fuck out of town, so I don't care about the sewer system. Absolutely. Right? I'm That's already digging a latrine, dude. Here. I don't That's care. Yeah. yeah. So, so for me, yeah, that's a non, that's a, that doesn't matter. And then fire, gas line explosions, rural fires, city fires. Yeah, that. So this is interesting. I I was just thinking about this. I saw, I was going over these questions or these uh, assumptions. Yeah. And and when I got to this, when I was thinking, you know, which goes along with the the next couple that's on this list is the firefighters, are they at home with their with their families? Are they working on getting their families out of the city? Of course or they are. they going to work? Yeah, the police are doing the same thing. Everybody's getting the is, fuck out of town. Police, exactly. Yeah. So that's like a, that's a scary reality that, um, you know, hopefully most of, if some, if, you know, it goes back to the community thing, if you can stay tight on community, you know, effort, you know, but. Yeah, I mean, and that's, reality. yeah, I mean, that's the thing. If you don't have a, community right around you then none of the other shit matters because you're going to have to be out of there as soon as it happens if you are in a place you know to start the conversation yeah in a yeah so if you're in a place where you have those people in line you're still gonna unless you're man you've got the entire township online with this or whatever you're going to have trouble with the sewer stuff unless you're in a rural area and you're on a septic system or whatever and you have and wells for very, water. Is there even any water 
you know, left to fight the fire. So yeah. I well, I mean, it, it, this it's all very dependent on where you're at. So, I mean, and that's the thing with the assumption sheet. It's going to make you think about where you're at, who do you know, what position are you in there, where would you have to get if, to be in the position to be able to survive. So it makes you rethink all of that shit. I mean, that's why it's a useful that's tool. Idea. Yeah, that's the point of this. Uh, closed roads, bridges out, trees down on road, rubble on road. Same go. thing. Right back to that. Yeah. So you can you even get out of where you're at? And yeah. if you can't, then why are you wasting your time not talking to the people around you so you can try to make it work? Very true. Fuck. Uh, total collapse of the economy. Yeah, well, I mean, stock I've, market cash. Money, yeah. money's worthless. And that's where it's going to come you know, into the uh, 100 items to disappear first because your money's going right to be your money's going to be worthless. So we'll so, I mean, we'll just put that on hold for that. Yeah, absolutely. We'll talk about that when we come to that cuz that's what it's going to come down to. What's worth something What's to somebody. First? Yeah. Um civil unrest, looting, oh, we talked about that. Yes, looting, riots, domestic fights, same deal. You got to have the community, right? Yes. Um, environmental upset, snow, freezing rain, floods, rain, tornadoes, earthquakes, chemical spills, chemical clouds, no lights, etc. So, yeah, you have a All volcanic er, uh, eruption. A super volcano erupts over here at um, what Yosemite, wherever Yosemite? the fuck. No, it's yellow, yeah, it's Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Absolutely. Yeah. So it, that erupts over there, and yeah, it doesn't kill us here, but it puts a cloud over us. Yeah, are no you prepared sunlight. for that shit? I don't think any of us are. prepared for no sunlight for yeah. months on end. Maybe so that's where years. you've got to have the food, you've got to have the gas mask, and you probably got to have some type of a suit to keep that shit off your skin, too, because Jesus. I don't even know, <laughs> man. Everyone wants Yellowstone fucking debris on their skin. Yeah. Their lungs. Critical people missing, number 10. Critical people missing or dead. Mayor, sheriff, police officers, EMTs, fire chief. You know, who you, you can't even call. But you, but how you organize? No communi- all communications are down. Hospital staff. I mean, dude, that's a huge one right there. You know, you can have all the doctors you want, but if you don't have hospital staff, I mean, you might as well give it up. You're not, you're not going to be able to take care of the community. So... Yeah, and I mean, that's the whole thing. They're all going to be trying to take care of their families, too. Unless you all have something figured out ahead of time. And, you know, to run hospitals and vehicles, you need to have fuel. You need to keep those stations going. And it has to be... So how long are you going to have fuel? Which brings us to the other thing. You can't can't even have uh, fire trucks, EMTs, any of that shit. You can't have generators to run it currently without fuel. You can't have the vehicles themselves. So, I mean, you know, and at this point, I mean, even if it were electric, even if they were electric, would it work? No, it wouldn't. Very much true. Because you know, even if you're running it off solar, if you have the EMP event like we're talking about, absolutely. you're fucked because fu- it ain't going to happen. Everything's fried. Yes. All your batteries are fried. You don't have shit. You're fucked. Anything that's not in a grounded case, it's fucked. So you might have enough batteries for your fucking flashlight and your wife's vibrator. And that's other it. than that. And that's it. Yeah. So All right. what the fuck We're ever. Number 11. <laughs> number 11. No, we just talked about. Oh, yeah. Services or resources destroyed. Water towers, treatment plant, hospital, which we just talked about. Jail, courthouse, banks, fire stations, dams, wow. levees. Wow. Jail. Yeah. Think about that one. Yeah. I mean, for some of them, yeah. Uh, the worst here, though, you think about the banks, which it's if you taking all these the by the time you there. get to this, the that doesn't money. fucking matter. Yeah. yeah. Like the, the money ATM. doesn't ATM. fucking ATM. matter. ATM, you know, man. like you see these uh, any post apocalyptic show. Yeah. How many times do you see a rich person running shit? Never, because they're a piece of shit. They don't know how to do anything. That's right. They're fucked. Yeah. Just like everybody else. Those, those, all those bankers have gone home. Yeah. They're hoping they have something else going on. Number 12, fast numbers of casualties and injuries. Yeah, the injuries would be the worst. The dead? Yeah, I mean, Jesus. the dead would be better. You just kick them aside. <laughs> the injured people, you got to take care of and try and carry them and keep them alive. Yeah, you got to bury Fuck, them. Fuck, why won't you just you die already? Rot your, we don't want to rot, not, not 
We'll just take them all to Detroit. <laughs> yeah, semi loads. We just keep one interstate clear. This is the fucking body hauling road. We'll convert all the semis to run on used cooking oil. Yeah, no shit. Uh, number thirteen. Here you go. Vast number of newly displaced people in your community and or vast numbers of refugees from other communities coming into your community looking for food, shelter, medical treatment, etc. Wow, that's that's huge. And that and that goes I think that goes it reminds me of a situation and in, in every apocalyptic situation. If you know, and not not even apocalyptic, I'm talking like six months to a year, you know. Oh yeah. People are gonna start getting pretty desperate within six months. There I mean Someone's already died in their group, and they need water now. Yeah. They'll probably kill to do it. You know, do you have enough ammunition at your house to protect the water that you have, or the food that you have for your family, or, or you know, et cetera? Hence, get out of Dodge. Yeah. So, um, all right, I think we covered... Uh, I mean, yeah, that's just a, a big... Swath. That's just a big point there, though, where it comes down to it. Do we... What's the moral Do we have our community? Are, are our communities strong enough to handle something like this? Or are you going to have to disappear? I don't think we're ready. I, I, yeah. I don't think we're ready. I think, I think, I don't want to slip this in there, but <laughs> I think, yeah, no, let's not. What, let's I mean, not. yeah, you decide uh, I think, what, I think, I think you, decide what you media, want to say. Okay, okay, I think social media has made us all socially retarded, which, which makes it difficult for people to have good, honest conversations you know yeah about things i mean definitely about things that could possibly happen like i mean we 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 yell and scream at people online but you don't do that in real life and now though you're right with social you don't even talk to people you don't talk to people. You know? take, I, I mean i mean let's be honest I, have you ever texted your wife in from the other room and said you know like no good night or something like that or uh, no i just I, absolutely i get up there and go in there and kiss her or whatever i'm like hey baby uh, well, I can guarantee you one or more of your friends have at some point, for sure. But I mean, that's just like that's every, that's every, that's everyone. You know? Yeah. You know, so um, it's just comfortable. I mean, that's where we're at. Yeah. Will it make or will it make or destroy us? We'll find out. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's you know, it's part of. Uh, i you know, I feel like, you know, a big part of our problem is we just don't talk to each other and we don't know each other. So True. that's going to be a big theme coming through the show, probably. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's one of my, one of the things I personally talk about and think about a lot. So uh, next, the next sheet here. There we go, the final, huh? Yeah, the final set of this. Um, 100 items to disappear. F it's not the final set because there's a little more after this, but 100 items to disappear first. We're not going to go over all of these. Absolutely. We're just going to run through some of the obvious shit and some of the quick, some of it quickly and kind of skip through it here. But, uh, guns and ammunition, number seven. Yeah. Guns well, number one is gen. Not. Yeah. Number one is generators, which is obviously, which, you know, it says, you know, good ones cost dearly, gas storage. They're risky, noisy, so it makes you a target. You have maintenance and everything else. So, Very true. yeah, they're going to disappear because people are going to hear them. They're going to know where they're coming from. Yeah. Um, but they do make some propane ones that you can run off of a tank that you store. A bit more. And they're a little quieter, quieter. but it's still, yeah. And then that's water, water filters, portable toilet. We'll just do the top ten real quick. Generators, water filters, portable toilets, seasoned firewood. Wood takes about six to twelve months to be cured. Uh, lamp oil, wicks, and lamps. Coleman fuel. These are interesting number. Let's stop on number five here. For a yeah. So um, the the, the uh, oil lamps, very cool. I love those. Like in case the power ever went out, you you like looking for candles and yeah, you know, flashlights and shit. These yeah. Things are really awesome. In a storm, <clears throat> and the oil lasts forever. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Highly so, recommend. Even on camping trips. Yeah, and it says here specifically uh, to buy clear oil, if possible, if scarce, stockpile any. Uh, number six, Coleman fuel. Uh, impossible to stockpile too much. That's a small propane tanks. Uh, number seven, guns, ammo, pepper spray, knives, clubs, bats, and slingshots. I mean, it's yeah, obviously. I'm I'm surprised that 
because there's yeah. enough of them to go around right now. So, but uh, yeah, Ob it's quite obvious. Uh, hand number eight, hand can openers and egg beaters and whisk. <laughs> number nine, honey no, syrups. Note, note, note that a, uh, a small community of uh, town hall use put this together. So yeah. Just so uh, number nine, honey syrups, white and brown sugar, and number ten, rice beans and wheat. So, yeah, I mean, so, these are all things that are pretty Survival fucking deck, useful. Have you ever, yeah. Have you ever uh, got into any of those? Any of those? Uh, I, yeah, that number seventeen mm -hmm. is their survival guidebook. Mm -hmm. These are pretty good ones out there. Yeah, and right above that, it's noted propane cylinders which are very useful because they make all sorts of shit that runs off of protein propane from tow trucks or you know uh, tow motors whatever fucking skid loaders and shit um heaters air conditioning cooking purposes whatever yeah survival guidebook i've got a couple running around yeah yeah i mean it's best to commit that shit to memory so you don't have to keep a book around that's true but you can only remember so much shit at the same time. Uh, let's yeah, let's what else we got on here? Saws, axes, and hatchets, wedges, vitamins. Yeah, like that. aluminum foil, regular and heavy duty. It's great cooking and barter item, which is a good point there. That's it's a great point. I mean, yeah, like, you know, when it comes down to it, if you don't have these items when shit goes down, the money's not going to be worth anything. Absolutely so it's going to be all, tr Absolutely not. yeah, it's all going to be trade. You're going to have to have something worth trading. Um, and you go down here, tuna fish and oil, first aid kits, batteries, all sizes, uh, garlic, hot dogs. Big dogs, <laughs> hot, big dogs, and plenty of dog food. Yeah, absolutely. Big dogs, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you gotta think about your dogs. Yeah, and then it skips a whole bunch. Yeah, like, yeah, we're missing yeah. several of them here. We missed a page. Then comes into ninety three. It's cigarettes. <laughs> Fuck, I would think those would go be gone quick. Yep. Those would be yep. all looted real fast. Glue, nails, nuts, bolts, screws, etc. is number 96. Chewing gum and candies, yeah, because who the fuck cares? <laughs> Atomizers for cooling and bathing. Hats and cotton neckerchiefs. And 100 goats and chickens. <laughs> goats and chickens, man. Yeah. So uh, here's a good quote from a Sarajevo war survivor. Experience horrible things that can happen in a war. Death of parents and friends. Hunger and malnutrition, endless freezing cold, fear, and sniper attacks. And then it's got another list of eight things here. Stockpiling helps, but you never know how long trouble will last. So locate renewable s food sources. Very interesting. Yeah. Absolutely. I have never read this book, but the, this excerpt here is definitely uh, interesting. Uh, I think it goes into, if, you don't, if we don't finish reading it here, it goes into, you know, what's a stockpile... If you were to stockpile things that boost morale, you know what I mean, like some kind of music, yeah, uh, you know, good, uh, decent foods, yeah, or um, as you can see, I can read through here. Yeah, it says one of the best things to stockpile is canned gravy. It makes a lot of the dry, unappetizing things you find to eat sometimes edible or somewhat edible. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> gross. Interesting. <laughs> canned gravy is horrible. I don't, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Yeah, number seven. You read if you read through that one there. That's uh, yeah, it's uh, the feeling that you're human can fade pretty fast. I can't tell you how many people I knew who would have traded a much needed meal for just a little bit of toothpaste, ro rouge, soap, or cologne. Not much point in fighting if you have to lose your humanity. These things are morale builders like nothing else. Now obviously this is a war. Surviving. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah, that's pretty cool, dude. Interesting. So yeah, I mean, that's it. Nothing else. It's a uh, thought-provoking conversation. I mean, what are you gonna do if the shit hits the fan? Are we talking? It's just like I say, if we're talking the zombie attack, if you're talking the Walking Dead, I think we would actually. I don't think it would go on that long. I think we'd wipe out the fucking zombies, and I think we'd figure out that once somebody died, there's this virus in the air that makes them be a fucking zombie, and we'd incinerate their bodies immediately. Okay whatever 
But if it's the like, what's that other World War Z? With, oh, that was a, that was interesting. They would kill us all in like three days. It'd be over It'd with. Be over with yeah, there's no fucking way. Did you see him climb that wall at Israel? I mean, unless, it, unless you were in a containment unit like like the Oil Boom Company had, but even then, it didn't it didn't hold those fuckers out, did it? No, it that shit's fucked. So that movie. Well, um, interesting. You know, uh, one last note is the, I tried to go to the uh, Indiana Gov uh, Comprehensive Emergency uh, page. Yeah. And it, it aired out on me at least three, three or four times. Oh, really? Just, uh, but in the, in, the, in the event something did happen like that. Oh, I'm sure it would work then. Prepared. You should have already been prepared then because yeah. you can no longer go there to find out where we can go to get clean water uh, yeah. sewer supply. You're fucked is what the problem is. They don't they don't have an answer for you. I mean, look what happened with Katrina and shit. The government's not equipped to handle that. You have to be prepared yourself. What? But, so. So. I think that's. I think we went over all this. I think we went over it quite a bit. But I, I'll tell you, interesting Interesting thing I just watched. It's not really interesting, but it's, it was really good. It was um, uh, Barry on HBO. Barry. Bill Hader. He's like this. Uh, he's like this uh, assassin that's really fucking good. Ex Marine. It's Bill Hader. He's like. Yeah. He's like a really, a really funny guy. Yeah, Bill Hader's guy. pretty funny. And uh, he, um, he, uh, he's so good at killing that, and he doesn't really want to do it. But this guy that he knows kind of just like talked him into doing it. And now he wants to get out of it and be an actor. And so he's like in his acting class and uh, he keeps getting fucking mixed up in all kinds of shit. And they keep, oh, yeah. Like, kill people, keep picking, making them knock people off. And so but it, it's on HBO. It's called Barry, Bill Hader. If you like Bill Hader. Yeah, he's that's pretty like, funny. That's some funny shit. Right? He's got, he's it's like, like a dark, it's a dark, dark comedy. That yeah. Is. Oh, that's cool. So uh, what's your favorite movie? So. You know, I always want to default to the cult classics. You know, I mean, that, the thing that Jeff, Jeff Bridges really pops into my head, you know. And, and But if I had to say, like, something that I really, like, I enjoy sitting down and watching, and it, it kind of relaxes me, is uh, Wes Anderson films. If you ever, uh, Wes Anderson. Because he always uses the, like, uh, like Grand Budapest Hotel. Um, he, uh, it's just the way... Name one. Grand Budapest Hotel. That's the, the name the of the movie? Aqua, the Life Aquatic. The Life Aquatic? Uh, that was a Wes Anderson one. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, I've seen that. Moondog Rising. That movie is... Uh, Moondog, I haven't seen that. Moondog Castle or some shit. Uh. Anyways. I've seen Life Royal Aquatic Ten a few times. The Royal Tenenbaums. Oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty fucking that's weird. Anderson. Yeah, he's weird. He's, uh, he I makes like, some weird shit. I like how everything's just like laid out. Yeah. Just like all those details of this... Yeah. It's so fucking laid out, man. It's yeah. like it's like a, an art. It's like an art. It's an art. Yeah. It has an art to it. And all do that. So, uh, what's your um, what's your favorite kind of movie then? Like. So okay, so like your like if you had to pick a genre of movie, I guess like your actions, it, comedies. I hate it, but I love movies that have that don't have a conclusion at the end. Oh sometimes. really? You like them fucking <laughs> weird? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, you know, it, it just, it, it, it kind of pisses you off and you're just like, what the fuck, you know? And so, I don't know, I enjoy that. It just, it's, uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of like listening to music, um, like the real heart, like the real grinding core of music, you know, they're just, they're just sitting there screaming, right? You think they're just sitting there screaming, but they're actually saying something. Yeah. And the music's actually saying something. Right. And, but if you when you look at it from, you know, if you watch the Hallmark Channel every day, you know you're not gonna be able to depict <laughs> what they're trying to say in this song as as it's part of it's part of a feeling, I guess. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. 
I'm really, I guess I'm really picky of what I, about what I watch. I yeah. guess I'm really, you hear how much better you sound? Yeah, now? absolutely. I just fixed yeah, it. Absolutely. Sorry. That's Sorry right. for the shitty audio on Jason, <laughs> the whole first part of it. That's Jesus probably best. That's probably best no, it isn't. It was good. <laughs> Um, re- really sorry, everybody. That's terrible because so, we can't go back and record that 52 minutes. I was, Jesus. Yeah, gosh. my bad. Harold. The whole fucking time. So now I can hear Jason, and so. I'm sure you can all hear him better, too. So I'm, you'll have to blow your ears God, out once music. it kicks music. in. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, what's your favorite? So you were, you played in a band for several years, right? I did. What was I it? did. How many different bands were you in? <sighs> well, I was with, I was, yeah, I, 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 I don't know where to start. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like the, one year, it was like one year I just got this, this uh, drum, this bass drum, then we found it at a yard sale and I had a bass pedal. And so we took it home. Uh, somehow, I think we went up to a relative's house uh, and they sent us to this little drum. It was actually p- a part of Guitar Guitar Town. Yeah. Right there at uh, Washington and like. Oh, yeah. Just that little. Remember uh, Guitar Town? Yeah. In there? It was real tiny. Anyway, right? so they had like a little. It was really tiny. And they had like a little drum. A little drum shop that was actually just to one side of that. And it was just from relatives of ours. But they're like, oh, okay. So, yeah, Jason and Eric wants to play drums. And so we had this bass drum and no snare, no hi-hat so we went in there and they're like okay we're gonna slay this snare in the stand and this hi-hat and the hi-hats you know and hi-hat stand so we got it brought it home put it in the middle of our living room i think my mom was at work or something and it's just my dad and my brother and me and we're just fucking beating the shit out of this fucking bass drum snare and hi-hat <laughs> and, and eric eric did it for a while my dad did it for a while kit. we're like indiana 1989 yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean and we're just like woo you know but it, but so my dad, you know, he did his, he did his thing, and then Eric he got tired of it real quick, and then and then I got on it and did it, and I was like, oh yeah, this is this is cruel. I have no fucking clue what I'm doing, <laughs> and and so I don't know what it was. It was I think I just uh, I just took it back. I took it out to the garage and I fucking just beat on it the next day. Yeah. And Eric went and you know Eric was more of a sports guy, I guess, and so he so I was I was the, I was the the paint and uh, fucking try to make some like create something you know so yeah and so and you know other than the bands i was in i just felt like i just always like wanted to create something you know what i mean yeah. so i was just like that's that's like uh you know other other than the real real life job you know yeah. so do you so you still write music uh i i still play guitar yeah. acoustic guitar so just like you know just practice you know little little things here and there little riffs here and there but yeah. nothing major no, so what's your favorite no. what's your favorite instrument I'd have to say right now, a guitar. Yeah. Acoustic, uh, right? Only because it's yeah. a lot easier to get away with playing that and in a household. And <laughs> yeah. the, the, you well, know. you can get an electric drum kit and put on your I headphones. do need to get an electric drum kit. But you still hear like, bat, 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 yeah. bat, bat, like bat, 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 on those pads. Being well, enough to drive the wife crazy. I just can't buy, I just can't bring myself to buy like the, the, the $500 drum kit, which is like the little plastic pads. I want, yeah. I want, I'm with like the mesh. I want like the mesh, the the real feel of the, the drum kit, right? Electric electronic drum kit, but yeah. Anyway, so. Yeah, so I mean, it was uh, we did a couple bands. I met John Daly in high school. He um, he got me into like actually. Well, he well. Let's take it out. Let's take if you want to take it back to grade school. We, no, we don't want to go back this far. I met David Wilkinson. Yeah. And he was like. You just say your he first was like names. The, the David. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, yeah, John and Dave. He, uh, he, um, he was really into Nine Inch Nails. Okay, so this was really yeah. the turning point. So I, I found the drum set yeah. at a young age. Yeah. Um, I'm like fucking with it, and you know, my only influence is nef- nothing really heavy, like as far as rock goes, because like every everybody was like listening to like rap at the at the. It was like a weird, like suburban like. <laughs> Yeah, we were, I mean, who didn't have the MC Hammer, the Vanilla Ice fucking cassette yes. tape? Don't fucking lie to me. You know who you had one. Rocking them? I was listening to Run yeah. DMC, Adidas sneakers. I, didn't, I wish I could have had Adidas sneakers. I had to wait till I was in high school and bought my own sneakers to buy Adidas. Mm-hmm. But, uh, 
So he got me. A, so so he introduced. So everything was kind of just going on a, a real like smooth plane. Yeah. Like like the Beatles were like, okay, I can do this little, you know, the the little, little Sergeant Pepper's yeah. like little beat. And that's how I, kind of how I learned. I just did a little basic thing, and then then Dave comes along and he's like, got this like nine inch nails fucking pumping on his fucking stereo, and you know, and I'm just like, wow, what is that? What is that sick sound? Yeah, <laughs> As a kid, sure. I'm like, oh my god! Yeah. It's like this is wild, this and is like and 90, it actually flows really good. Like ninety one or ninety so, or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It just like blew my mind. That, that was so that, that was the turning else. point. That was yeah. the turning point of I don't know, like mainstream music yeah. into the dark, into the dark side. Yeah, uh, you know. So, and then everything from there was just like, man, it's just so much music to enjoy. Yeah, for sure. So, so what was the uh, first record you bought? <sighs> Secretly, <laughs> I don't care. Just the no. First I one. think I think I wasn't I wasn't prepared, but uh, it was. Uh, I think it was. Um, it was before I was introduced to real, you know, hard music. And yeah. What was so it? It, I think I want to say mine's embarrassing. It was Go ahead. The Queen. Not really embarrassing. Queen album, I think it was the Queen album, Which one? and the Aerosmith like fucking, uh, it was like kind of the both at the same time. No, yeah, I actually I take it back. I mean, let's we had the Vanilla Ice, the MC Hammer cassette yeah. tape. I think that could be if if we was, don't want to count the that first one. one. You bought your own with your own money that your parents didn't pay for. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a yeah. good one. That's a good one. I would say it would have been. Mm. Soundgarden. Yeah. Soundgarden. Which one? The Black Hole Sun album. Yeah. Yep. I had a. Yep. I that's had what a, it was. I got. Um, we went to. I was, there was a CD exchange, and I think it's still there. Yeah. And uh, it, yeah, it was like the pl- play it again thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like the perfect thing to go buy. I bought. A, like, I know, bought six uh, bucks. Guns and Roses. Use your illusion. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It was a tape. Yes. Yeah. It was like. Fucking, I bought many tapes. I've had many tapes. That's yeah. Interesting enough. It might have been. I'm pretty sure it was Use Your Illusion. It might have been the uh, uh, one that came out right before that. What the fuck was the one? You know, I was, whatever. I'll, I'll tell you one. I mean, I think I was even younger, and there was this older kid in our neighborhood, and he he brought over. He gave us this tape. It was like a recorded onto like a blank tape, uh-huh. and it was too short. Yeah. Okay. So me and my brother was like eight. Maybe like seven. Yeah. Okay. And, <laughs> and we would take and we take this little fucking we take this tape and Eric's like, I got this tape from so and so and it's got the, it's got some too short on. It. I'm like I'm like what the hell? I've never even heard that in my life, you know, at this point. And so we go in our room, we we, we just shove a little towel underneath the uh, underneath the door, and and we put it we put it in a tape player. I could turn out the light and fucking play that fucking tape, and it was and it was too short, and it was the most <laughs> it was the most cuss words. And the F word I've ever heard in my life, like as a kid, you know, ever before in my life. And so that was, that was just hilarious. We were just like two like Catholic kids, just like hiding yeah. <laughs> the too short, two yeah. white suburban kids listening to some too short, yeah. you know, in total secrecy. And we're like, Oh my God, he said fucking bitches. Oh, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? I we're like, said. Oh shit. You know, like- so. Two years later, you're yeah. in the same spot smoking cigarettes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh shit! Uh, stealing my dad's hams out of the yeah. out of the fridge. So, so. Uh, what's what's your uh, favorite record? Man, album, whatever. God, you know, I, 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 Radiohead has like gone in such a crazy direction. Like, like I love it. I love it. How the stuff that they don't ever play on the radio. You know what I mean? Like <clears throat> in Rainbows album. I don't know if you've heard. I haven't heard any of it. Oh, man, I, I, confession. I stopped listening to Radiohead years ago. <laughs> after the Pablo Honey, or was it after Kid A? Uh, yeah, I had Kid A. I and had it, Knives Out yeah, too. Yeah. And at Knives Out, I just I was out. Knives Out. Yeah. At, I, at Knives Out, I was out. Knives Out. Yeah, that's that. Why don't uh, I remember that album? I don't know. I was it before it. Hail to the Thief? That was the last. I, I think it was bef- right before that. It might have been right Bef- after that. I don't know. No, I think it was. There's like a little EP. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I've listened to that little. little yeah, day. but that's the last time. But, that's the last shit of theirs I listened to. I don't really listen to. Them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what's your, so what's the fuck's your favorite record? Oh my 
Quit God, dodging the question. It is, it is, it's a tough Just question. It. It's a tough question. Um, I don't know. I, I wish I didn't prepare for this answer. This this question. Oh come on! I should have. You don't know the answer. God, favorite. That's such a broad. That's like a that covers everything. There's a lot of albums. There's a lot of. Albums. There's a lot of albums to choose from. A lot of really good ones. Yeah, yep. I wouldn't be able to answer it either. I can't. So it's too hard. I thought it was it's too I, much. I too wanted much to ask anyway. It's too much pressure. So, what's your favorite genre of music? Oh my god, I would. I don't know. I don't know. I I. What do you listen to the just, most? Okay, well, I was lately. just okay. Yeah, so I was just about to say, I've been listening to a lot of at the drive-in. Yeah. But, uh, Guilty pleasure is Thursday. Yeah. Uh, Deftones are always on my list. Yeah. In my uh, my playlist. Yeah. Uh, I've been going back to the fragile a little bit oh, the last man. month. Yeah, I haven't it's, been doing that. Uh, <laughs> 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 you know, I like all the greats. Yeah. All the greats. I listen to uh, all kinds of shit these days. A lot of mostly hip hop and. Yeah, and I don't and, really. I I mean, I still listen to, you know, thrash, speed, metal. Heavy metal. Yeah, I don't go. Types, I don't go real but, fast. I don't go. Yeah. Uh, I like Cannibal Corpse, but I'm just like, not every day. Yeah. Cannibal Corpse, you know, if, yeah. if it's gonna be like thrash metal. Yeah, I'm more like a. I like Lamb of God and Slayer. Yeah, they got some good breaks. You know what I mean? Yeah, from I like it. COC. Absolutely. Shit, you know, and that's like. No, that's all I on my playlist. To a lot of that is all. I listen to a lot of hip hop these days. Though. A lot of hip hop. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I think I listen a lot of a, a little bit of dubstep. Not much new uh, stuff. A little dubstep in there. Yeah. Uh, I find it calms my nerves sometimes. And of course, J- JT. I got <laughs> you. Got to throw some love to Justin Timberlake. Uh, That's one sexy man. He gets it done. Uh, yeah, he in, does. In, 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 in cartoons, show. in cartoons and movies, he gets it done. That guy's all over the place. So, what's your favorite drug? Drug? Yeah. It's, Wow. All of them. Wow. I'd have to say marijuana. I mean, I mean, come on. I think it. I think it's. I think it's long past due. This stuff should just be legal. You know what I mean? I mean, you got people bo- popping Xanax all day long for anxiety. You know, just let these people smoke a joint. I mean, yeah. come on. That's, we that's my in, argument. Yeah, we live you know? in the crystal meth capital of the world. Exactly. Uh, Come not, on now. It's in Indiana. Yeah. I mean, not. In, I know that was know. surprising. I heard this the other yeah. day. Yeah, like, but uh, we can't smoke weed. What the fuck? You'd rather have people ODing on crank than smoking in duty. Well, that's interesting. You say that because they they have supposedly they have safe places for them to do this, is it, or, or shoot up. Have you heard, have you heard of this? I think it's in San Francisco, maybe. Oh yeah, not little here. safe houses, little shoot up house, yeah. little shoot up uh, lounges. Yeah, you know, you can safely dispose your needle uh, if you need to. Um. So there's that. Yeah, I at mean, least the needles aren't on the ground anymore. Yeah, I mean that's. They, I don't have a problem with. It. I mean, here's the deal: is that you end up spending a lot of taxpayer dollars on uh, reviving people when they overdose and wasted ambulance runs and. All True. this other shit that nobody's paying for, so the taxpayers foot the bill on it. When That's, instead you yeah. could be spending those resources on giving people a safe place to do it and a means to get rehabilitated. Yeah. You know, I mean, they've done it in other places. And I mean, if they have the means, I, I mean, all right, I'm all right with it if they're gonna if they're gonna you know do something with it, not just you know leave them to leave them to just shoot up there safely. You know yeah. what I mean? I think there should be some. I think we need less jails, more hospitals, maybe, yeah. or more facilities. Yeah, well, not I mean, hospitals, that's, that's but facilities. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and in the countries where they've legalized this stuff, they've they've had experiments where they've people will come in and they'll give you a dose that won't kill you, and they don't right. really encourage you to get off of it. But there are resources there, and they provide resources for you to get off of it. And fewer people are addicted. More people, yeah, more people try it at first, but fewer people end up addicted because there are resources there and they're not being criminalized and thrown in jail. Oh, they're very true. Given the resources to, you know, overcome their problem, which. Yeah, I don't think a drug addict should be in jail. 
Well, no, I mean, even if they're caught the, with it, I it's think a huge waste of time, and it ends up really affecting the poor community way more than anybody else, because <clears throat> that's just where they catch criminals, man. You yeah, know, that's true. And so, yeah, that's fucked. Um, great. So, what? Where were we? <laughs> we were talking. We got off the check I on asked that one. you what your uh, was it? Who? So, the, who's your favorite artist? Favorite uh, artist. artist. Musical. Sure. Yeah, wow, it, it, God, group, man! I, I group person, man, and and this, and these, I didn't, I didn't even mention whatever. these. I didn't even mention these these favorites here. So, so you got you got uh, you got Maynard, you know James Keenan. Uh, he's got you know the Tool, the Pussifer, you know the you like the, uh, the Perfect Circle, yeah. the. I think that's it. Pussifer's awesome. <laughs> Pussifer is amazing. Yeah, is. I mean, if I had a favorite album, almost at this point, I don't want to call. I don't want to call it right up front. But it's it's probably gonna be a post for album in there somewhere. The uh, conditions of my parole was one of the one of my favorite. I'd say in the in the last fucking eight years, conditions of my parole was fucking top notch. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Top album. notch. Did you see them when they were on tour here and they had the man? Fucking, mm, uh, I missed it. Oh, dude, they had the uh, what do they the, what do they call the. Fucking Mexican wrestlers, the Lucifer. Yeah, so or yeah, that was their uh, that was their theme in yeah. um, that album. What the fuck are they called? Uh, the Macho Libre. I don't, <laughs> that's I the, don't remember what the that's the uh, that's that that's Macho Libre. Is that that's the, yes. Jack Black. <laughs> yes, Jack Black. Absolutely great guy. You know, uh, have you seen their their new new documentary coming out? Uh, it's for uh, <clears throat> Chris Farley. Oh really? Yeah, it's uh, it looks a, pretty a fucking documentary interesting. Documentary or like, it's like a a biopic. Bi- biopic. Is Jack Black gonna be Chris Farley? No, it's oh, okay. but it's like it's not a. I don't think it's a biopic. Mm. It's more documentary ish. Okay. Yeah. It, they interview all of his you know friends and close. You know, and. Um, they talk about Chris Farley. Yeah. Oh no, that's cool. <laughs> uh, the the one of the just they had uh, Goodman. Yeah. John Goodman was was uh, part of the preview. Uh, the sneak I peek love there. John Goodman. So part of the sneak peek, and he's just like, he was a ball of energy. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. interesting. What's your, what's your favorite uh, comedy movie? Mm. <laughs> better. Man, yet. I'm gonna have to say no, Step yet. Brothers. Oh, fucking I, just like. Okay. Took the cake. Yeah, that shit's. Uh, <laughs> took I the cake. My balls on your drum kit, bitch. Took the cake on everything. Yeah, that was pretty funny. I don't know if it took the cake, but it was pretty funny. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Going and if I go old fashioned, I'd say fucking favorite. Like, as a kid growing up, I I thought uh, the Great Outdoors. Yes, was like, it was, was just like, like an amazing. I was trying to lead you into that. <laughs> that that movie like a, is awesome. It was just like an amazing thing. That shit's hilarious. Because you got it all in that movie. Yeah. You got the city, you got the boat, you got the flashy guy, you got the home guy, yeah. you know, you got the... <laughs> dude. It was, Dan Aykroyd's shit is hilarious in that movie. He cracks me the fuck up. Jet's gonna shit us all like a little brick. What a surprise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Roman. <laughs> Roman. That's, That's it. I couldn't think of his name in that movie. That shit's wow. hilarious. Wow, what a... <laughs> Yeah, that movie is bigger than it was meant to be. <laughs> it was like, it's but, perfect. Uh, Every bit of it's perfect. It's fucking gorgeous. So, uh, great. So we talked about movies. We talked about music. So you do, you like, you're into like art and shit too, right? Like, yeah, I try to, I haven't done a whole lot. I've been working on a few different little things. I'm trying to, uh, in the process of getting tweaked, um, uh, printing. Printing on, well, t-shirts, obviously, but printing on wood also. Yeah. I want to work with, uh, I'm trying to perfect the uh, development part of this right now, which I need a little bit of help with, actually. But I've only had, you know, maybe like 10 hours to actually get into it and actually try to do the, you know, the photo emulsion on the silk screen and develop it and with your own, with your pattern. And then I want to print on wood yeah. also. So that's one of my pet projects and... So, and then the other one was, uh, you know, um, stained glass. Oh, yeah. So, I got a few supplies for that. I'm ready to go on that. I need to find some glass 
and like a little uh, small glass, you know, cutter, like a little grinder. I guess that's key uh, in the stained glass. Yeah. You know, because you can cut out your, sh- your normal shapes, but then you got to clean them up a little bit for your the pattern you already have put together. So. Yeah. So yeah, that was one. So I definitely, if I produce anything, any artwork within the next two or three years, it's going to be, you know, with one of those things. And I don't know. I, keep, I like to keep my mind running on something, you know, because yeah. get you out of the everyday mundane, you know, life of uh, going to work and you know being a robot. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what's your favorite hobby when you're not working right now? Wow. So interesting. Uh, after work every day. I try to get me and Vance to go on a bike ride because he just, he's he's like a week into riding his bike without training wheels. Oh, really? So that was, that was great. That was great. He's just like, cause every day I, right when I pull in the driveway, he runs right out. And before I even get out of the car, he's like, we want a bike ride. I'm like, let's do it. Let's roll. So, you got <laughs> so, your own bike? so I do have a bike. I've had a bike for a while. Uh, I love, I love to ride the thing, but then I just got into this like slump, man. Like, you know, I just could just like take off on the bike and you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, th- this summer hit, he got his bike out. I'm like, well, dude, let's try this without training wheels. You know, he's six and, uh, he, it took him like three days to get it. Yeah. And we're about two weeks into full on bike riding around the neighborhood. Oh, that's cool. So, dude. That's fun stuff. Yeah. I bet he's enjoying that. Hobbies. Uh, I'll play around the guitar some, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm so I, I definitely trying to learn some uh, Corel art, uh, kind of just like a little bit of design, and that goes with the whole printing thing too, because it's uh, trying to learn that program, yeah. which is close to like Photoshop and stuff like that. Which you know, Photoshop's like fucking three or four hundred dollars a year, just right. it's just a subscription. You can't even buy. You know, a copy of Photoshop, you got to get a subscription. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not that serious yet to where I need to, you know, but that's definitely a program you have to learn if you want to do some commercial yeah. sketches and oh, patterns. That's, so. Yeah, that's cool, dude. So, uh, do you, uh, do you, what's your favorite sport? Do you like any sport? Sport. Everybody likes at least one. Wow. You know, F1 racing yeah. is just like something I, I don't know what it is. Is I just find it fucking so fascinating that that shit's like those cars are like that. You know, that someone built those cars like that. And, you know, that's how they run. And, you know, they got a whole system set up and like the open wheel, you know. Yeah. Uh, Indy cars are kind of interesting too. So, but, yeah, that's pretty and cool. it's just kind of like a, I don't know, it's kind of a camaraderie thing, you know, and just have, I, I like to listen. I, I like to listen to things more these days. Right. Um, I, for some reason, I know I can't, you know, other than movies and like, you know, new series and stuff like yeah. that, you know, I just can't watch regular TV. So what's your favorite series news. or show or whatever? So I told you, I already told you about Barry. Yeah, yeah. That was a pretty good one. Is that your um, favorite? That was, that's my favorite right now. Yeah. What's yeah. your favorite that's ever? Your favorite ever? Ooh. Man. God. Robot chicken. Oh shit! He's pulling <laughs> one out right now. <laughs> so, so that, so they have re- they're rerunning that on uh, Hulu right now. So that's that's interesting. That's written by Seth Green, right? Yeah. That's all. Yeah. 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 yeah he's pretty funny. And uh, I really miss the celebrity death match. Oh, I dude, mean, come that on! It's so, that's awesome, so therapeutic uh, yeah. for the times. Watching those you know what I mean? Smash each other. Like imagine. Well, just imagine the characters now. Mm-hmm. Who would we have? up there and celebrity next celebrity death match Who, who's it gonna be it's gonna be like trump and pelosi or something you know what i mean they'd have they, pretty good they put them all up there for sure yeah you know, i so. think that uh what oh i know what i want to see oh ellen degeneres and toby mcguire <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> they're like the exact same person yeah so like they, they're do, they're yeah, they need yeah they need to bring that bring celebrity death yeah. match back Bring celebrity deathmatch back. I that's totally agree. That, I want to see Jimmy. That's what we need to co- gain the community's yeah. strength on. Is Jimmy Kimmel <laughs> and Jimmy Fallon face off. Oh my God, amazing. Or throw in David Letterman uh, into that. Isn't he into retired? That mix. Letterman? Yeah. Well, you got to throw him in the mix anyway because he's current. He's, oh, well, he's not current, current, but you know what I mean. He's doing some other shit, right? What is that guy doing? Fucking looking at all of his cars? I don't know. Maybe. I don't think he has all the cars, does he? Jay Leno does. 
Oh, Leno. Oh, Leno. Oh, yeah, I was thinking of Letterman. No, I was thinking of Leno. You're, I'm thinking of Leno. Yeah. He, he'd get in there with his chin and fucking fuck some shit up. His chin? <laughs> yeah, he'd take it all out. And be like, well, you'd, uh, the only... The only uh, you'd have to put uh, Leno and uh, Conan O'Brien in, oh, uh, in, yeah. the, in this match. I mean, come on, just hash that out. Yeah. Whose angular jaw will take over? Who will win the... The World Cup of I mean, what, what, are, what did happen with that slot? I mean, was that... Did Leno bailed out? He sold it to Brian, O'Brien, and then uh, what? Leno was like, no, fuck it. I, I want it back. I don't know. Yeah, and he like went that. on for another two years and went off. It was something like that. It was <laughs> and we never heard from weird. Conan. You know, I... He's on TBS. He is. He is yeah. on TBS. You're well, right. Well, he actually. was. I don't know if he still is. Well, well I started listening to... Uh, I actually started listening to his podcast the other day. Uh, is any good? <laughs> so, it's actually kind of funny. Have you seen it the is. Ron Jeremy podcast? Huh? Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it yet either. Or I've seen it, but I haven't heard it. I've seen about it. Conan across... The Ron Burgundy. Oh, fuck, dude. Yeah. Yes. I I am about six our... episodes in. To Ron Burgundy. Of Ron Burgundy. Podcast. I just listened to the Haunted Garage uh, episode. Yeah. <laughs> and let me tell you... The... Are you in? How far? I haven't heard it yet. Oh I've seen God. it. I've downloaded a few episodes, but it's I haven't amazing. listened to it yet. It's amazing. Start from the beginning. Really? It's, like, it's, it's amazing. It's pretty funny. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. So, it's total Ron Burgundy. It's right. amazing. It's amazing. That's pretty funny shit. That sounds like it sounded like that could good. be my favorite fucking thing right now. Actually, <laughs> until I finish that, yeah. and then my life is going to be <laughs> going downhill yeah. from there. So, are it's, you into Game of Thrones at all? Did you watch that? I, I never started it. Yeah. I couldn't I I couldn't bring myself to accept the, the dress, the, the costumes. Oh yeah. You know, I couldn't I couldn't do it. I just you know I saw I just got out of the Lord of the Rings uh, era and uh, and <laughs> I was like no I'm not gonna do it and I, everybody tells me it's fucking amazing. It is really good. I, I, mean, I haven't it, seen anything though. The the last thing I saw is the end of episode four. So I couldn't do the Walking Dead. Four, so. I couldn't do. Watched, I couldn't you know, do the Walking did Dead. You watch any of it at all? Not even, maybe one episode. I watched the first four seasons of that. Couldn't do it. Same with fucking Breaking Bad. <laughs> I love, I, I I love Breaking that Bad. Shit either. I did love that. Yeah. Oh my god, that was amazing. But I would. I wouldn't. I would. It's not good enough to watch again. I mean, yeah. it was fucking badass for one run round. <laughs> <laughs> you know what is good enough to watch again and again is Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Okay, so I've like only that? seen like a season uh, yeah. of that. That shit's pretty funny. Yeah, but, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. So. I got side. I got sided off. I started watching it. Oh, uh, Ozark. Yeah, Here that's fucking excellent. Man, yeah. was that not fucking a, a, a season two fucking? Like, I haven't watched the. Oh. Fin- I haven't finished it. Yet. It's heavy. Yeah. It's heavy. You just chill with that. Jason. Shit. Did you see Endgame? Bates. Jason Bateman. Bateman. Have you seen Endgame? Are you into the Marvel movies at all? So I think I finished the ending of it. We start. Is this was Thanos is fucking getting down. Everybody's on Thanos at the end, and you were getting close to the end or something like that, right? What are you talking about? Uh, did you go to the theater? In no, the last I did not. Two weeks? No. Then you haven't seen Endgame. So what the hell did I watch? Avengers. You watched Infinity Wars. Infinity Wars, yes, sir. Yes, when he snaps his fingers and kills half the people on Earth, or yes, the type of yes, people. that was it. Okay, yeah. so I have not this been to the, the Endgame. No, so obviously how that. much I pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how much I. I okay, well that to. fucking answers that question. Jesus. I. I couldn't get into those. I watched The Man of Steel. I thought that was a pretty uh, good rendition of Superman. Yeah. That's a different uh, is it, What is it? That's a DC show. DC. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, what's your favorite food? Man. So, I like sushi. I a shit sushi. ton. I had a fuck ton of sushi on Friday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I'm like... Because I'll just do the crab... Most of the time, yeah. the crunchy crab. Oh, really? On sushi? And, uh, yeah, it's got the little crunchies uh, on the end. So shit I like with I'm like me. I'm like American time, Americanized yeah. like sushi. I'm like, yeah, you I need mean, sushi. Some but... fucking eel. Some eel sashimi. <laughs> some raw eel. 
That's where but, it's at, brother. So Some you just pick good. it up, just pick it up and eat it, dip it. Yeah. Some wasabi and Some wasabi soy sauce. Soy sauce, if you want Makes to. That shit. Like yeah, yellow. They put it in eel sauce and shit. Eel sauce? Yeah, they make that own sauce. What the fuck's the eel sauce? It's just for getting goodness. Horse I don't know what's in it. I didn't ask him. No, it's like a... Does it open you up like wasabi? Brown. Or is no. it more soy saucy? It's, yeah, it's more, it's not, it's more mild. I see. I eat all sorts of shit, though. I don't care. I like it all. I do like it all. I, you know, <clears throat> I like food a little too much, actually, sometimes, so. I would a, never say that. That's probably Even, probably if, it, even if it were true, I wouldn't admit it. Because I like food a lot. What do you have a... Whataburger. I heard you talk about Whataburgers your last uh, last episode, you know. And, yeah, and I'll have to sucks. say, it, it's not like gourmet or anything. Yeah. But. That's a, a huge understatement. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's no good. It's it's not bad. Uh, it's not bad. I mean, I, said, I need to give it another shake, but. Um, well, I think if, then, I think you could go. I think you can go to a Burger King. <laughs> Then you can go to Burger King and get shit on in the same way. Yeah, I probably. Think. And then you go there the next time, like, God damn, that was fucking good. I've never thought that about food at Burger King. <laughs> I've been like, God damn, that'll make a turd. <laughs> that's about as. Yeah, I usually regret it after I eat it. But yeah, that's just terrible. It's good and it good. usually isn't a turd. I usually spray paint the inside. Well, of you don't get bowl. anything other than a Whopper, so no. that's. <laughs> you know, that's what I was saying about the fucking Whataburger. I guess. <laughs> What'd you get there? Like a fish sandwich? Like a water burger. You got a water burger? It's the name of it. It's the water burger. Did you get a double? The sandwich. Yeah. Well, we'll see. What would yeah. what'd you get on it? Did you get bacon? I had everything on it. You had everything? Yeah. You still didn't love it? No, I didn't love it. It, was, it wasn't, wasn't nothing special. No. It wasn't special. It wasn't special. It was fast food. It was a food. I mean, I'll just, yeah, let's be honest. Food. It was just fast food. That's what I was saying. It was like a McDonald's. Yeah, I don't hear... The thing is, is I don't hear people being like... I fucking love McDonald's, but I hear people <laughs> like, I fucking love Whataburger. This is because it's Suck all like out of ass. state and shit. You and know? I can and understand like, why you would love Wendy's because like, they got a savage Twitter account. But other than that, wow. they're off with the shit. It's amazing. Yeah, Wendy's is totally hip these days. I love Wendy's. Check I, out Wendy's. A lot of people don't like Wendy's Twitter. because. <laughs> I'm not being paid for this, but is check that, it out. Is that what they're. Yeah. Is that what's trending? The Wendy's Twitter account is savage, bro. They rip on people all the time. It's funny. Beautiful. I will check that out. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Hey. So what's your favorite um, social media? Man, you know, I think uh, the weird, this is like really weird because I'm like furthest, furthest is would be Facebook about mid grade, mid, mid, midline. Mid, Facebook you know, sucks. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's out. That's, that's the next one above that one. It would be or below or whatever. <laughs> Just start from the f- number five, <laughs> number four. They'll see. There's. Let's see. I got one, two, three. okay, four. Just okay. tell me your favorite one. Four being the worst is Facebook. Yeah. Facebook All right. Then there's Instagram. So yeah. it's, an, it's it's a toss up between Instagram and Twitter, at this point. But I would have to say that my number three is Instagram. Uh-huh. Uh, number two is Twitter. I enjoy that one because there's so much. It's so like when you when you get shit. into this, yeah, yeah. When you get into the Twitter, and then my next one, I'm going to tell you, it's going to blow your mind. Uh, it's not going to blow your mind. I think I know who it is. But uh, so so the Twitter thing is like interesting because you get so many facets and like so many ideas and yeah. so much shit. You going can find on. everybody. On you there. follow everybody, and, you, and everybody always says shit on there. You know, yeah. you, you, so you can't get people to shut up on Twitter. You, no, no, it's like a it, yeah. yeah, it's everywhere. But so, and then my number one. Right now is Reddit. Yes, there it is. <laughs> That's I can curse. Oh that my god! The, are you on the Am I the asshole on Reddit? I don't know. Follow that subreddit, I don't dude. What I want some. Hilarious. I want some these great. People, so people get on there and they explain their situations and everybody goes through and judges it. Either like you're not the asshole, you oh. are the asshole. There's oh, I gotta no do that. Asshole here. I need that to do the right or now. whatever, right? <laughs> yep. And uh, I. Uh, the funny thing is, is that 90% of them, either it's obvious they're the asshole and they're just hoping that people will, they're trying to talk their way into getting people to see things their way, which they never can. Mm-hmm. Or 
it seems obvious that they're not the asshole, but they're such nice people that they don't notice that. And so it's, uh, it's like you either get complete douchebags or people who are completely naive on there. It's I'm fucking, the asshole. I'm there now. I'm, yeah. joining, I'm joining it. Right. Am I the asshole? Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Red is pretty cool. Though. Yeah. I like it. So. So, yeah. Uh, the the ones going, uh, what is it? Uh, hold my Cosmo or hold, hold my beer. Hold my beer. Hold my feeding tube. Hold my feeding tube. <laughs> so yeah, so the <laughs> hold my feeding tube. Yeah. Have you heard? Have you seen this? No, I mean, I just go. Seen it. I yeah. mean, just videos out the. I mean, just like the people are just getting demolished. Yeah, old people. I mean? <laughs> I mean, no, old and young. Where are they getting demolished? Oh by? man, I mean, they're just like, like they're just trying something stupid. Yeah. And they just fucking just crash the hell out, dude. Yeah. I mean, like so they're bikes, need a bikes or skateboards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> bikes or skateboards or. You know, just um, somebody trying to jump over a fence and just fucking just gets gets their nuts gets caught mangled. on or something. Yeah. <laughs> gets mangled. <laughs> their nuts mangled. And Fuck. they may. And some of these videos, you like hey, you think man, about that's it. That's good though. That's a natural selection taking out the dumb ones for us. That's right. That mangles their nuts that's right. Enough. And some of these, I mean, you see some of these people wipe out, and you're like, dude, that dude may need a feeding tube. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> That's terrible. But, uh, yeah, the hold my beers are really good. Hold my Red Bull. That's yeah. a good one. Um, uh, just just for starters uh, yeah. on Reddit. The, for entertainment, awesome. you can just go to inter- Reddit right now. I, I suggest everybody gets one right now. And just fucking just start with those three that we just mentioned. And <laughs> you'll be entertained for weeks. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Reddit's fucking great. It's it endless. makes me laugh. It's like endless of yeah. amounts. Of- for sure, mm-hmm. dude. So, what's your favorite uh, alcoholic beverage? Man, I've been really into, and I don't know what it is. I've been really into the a vodka tonic, lemon twist, with a with a with a jalapeno olive, a cocktail onion, and an olive stuff with like blue cheese on a spear, in this thing, and then, and then pour a little bit of olive juice in, in it to make it like a dirty. Yeah. Almost like a dirty martini. That sounds like a lot of work for a drink. And it just it's it's you just amazing. Take yourself? I do. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Well, you know, I do. I, I make them in the little uh, <clears throat> the little whiskey shot glasses. Yeah. You know, and then not a shot glass, but you know, like the yeah. little, the little whiskey and ice. So do you make a bunch of these in advance? So, so well, you can well, just here go have one ready? Well, when I just like want one, yeah. just like a little nightcap, <laughs> I'll just I'll just make one of them. But if like I'm going outside, like in like a summer. Like out to the campfire or something. What I'll do is I'll get, I'll get me one of them, um, uh, uh, McAllister's cups. Yeah. You know, with the iced tea cups. Yeah, the big. Like, and I'll just fill that thing with up like with ice. Forty ounce glass. Yeah, I just I just fill it up with some really good ice, high quality. Yeah. <laughs> High quality filtered shit. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah, you do, you don't want to use the, the ice out of your water. No, no. Yeah, it'll yeah. destroy the whole taste. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't want it to melt in there like that. And then uh, I'll do like four shots of, you know, just make a four, a quad yeah. helping of it. And that just sounds... go out, go out into the wilderness, you know what I mean? Just go out, go go out, out into the crowd, the you go wilderness. mingle, you go mingle yeah, a little bit with mingle. that thing in your hand. Go out to the like, wilderness, you know. it's like the backyard. <laughs> That's right. You know? oh, it's dangerous. They're going to be back through here for a while. <laughs> These fucking lightning bugs, they'll get you. Look out. Oh, I shit, hope, there's a I hope we possum. have our water purification tablets. Yeah, yeah no cause... shit. <laughs> Stuff could get You might not make it back inside. Right. Fucking 25 feet yeah. from the door and you're lost. <laughs> what is this strange new world we've entered? It's like we've gone through a time machine into the end of the world. Humanity's gone. Oh, it's just a vaporizer. It's a vape. Yeah, it's like yeah, that's what all the kids are doing. nicotine vaporizer. <sighs> Trying to quit cigarettes. I made a promise that I would before our vacation, so... We'll see how that goes. When's your vacation? Uh, June second. June second, Florida. I'm gonna probably try. I'm Man. gonna try to uh, record a podcast down there. Nice from the beach. Yeah, beaches. Get your local. Close get your local on there. We've got a. Um, fuck! I think we're renting a condo or something. Hell, I don't know. My wife's awesome. That's the way to go. That That's yeah. the way to go. I don't even think about it. She takes yep. care of all of it. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So, Same here. Uh, Same here. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're set up good. Yeah. We're gonna go in October. Destin. Oh, all right. Nice little place. Oh, uh, we're going to Key West. Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. Very cool. So, what's your favorite place you've uh, vacationed? God. 
since we're talking about that. I mean, well, I mean, I don't have to mention Hawaii. Well, yeah, but I mean, you, uh, you do. It, that's it, your favorite place. It is definitely, definitely an obvious one. See, uh, we were talking about that, but we weren't talking about it in here. So. That's true. Very true. Yeah. The Hawaii, absolutely. Yeah, Hawaii is pretty nice. That was amazing. Yeah. Uh, we stayed on... How long um, were you there? Oahu. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that was the island. How long were you there? Uh, we were there... Solid week. Yeah, sweet. Solid week. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I mean, a solid week. It rains week. like every day. But yeah, it's nice. uh, it wasn't bad. Was there was maybe just like a little shower in the morning here and there. That's what I'm saying. It rains. Get you all damp and it hot. It every day for like five minutes. Something. Yeah, and it's something. back to and something. normal. The sun's usually shining when it does anyway. Oh, it was amazing. It's like, oh, here's it's a little amazing. sprinkle for you, bitch. It's that seawater coming in. But, uh, yeah, it was great. I mean, we, we went, we, thankfully, we had uh, our, a good friend who invited us out there, uh, gave us a place to stay, and all we had to really do is um, pay for the uh, the plane trip, you know. I mean, yeah. God, that was like $1,000 a seat, yeah. you know, a They're piece just to get out there. Yeah. So, you know, that she was pretty much like, hey, if you guys get out here, you know, you know you're going to have room and board, which was, you know, half the cost. I mean, I'd say that's 50% of the cost. Oh, yeah. Going Rooms out are outrageous. there. outrageous. Going out there. They're really expensive. Were you so, in a hotel? No, nope. Yeah. We were in like a little, we were in a house yeah, okay. in a neighborhood. Cool. Uh, right on the little, uh, it was kind of like a little golf coming, like ish little area. Yeah. You know, off before you hit the sea. Uh-huh. And uh, they, it had a little infinity pool, you know, not huge, but just like right out in front, just like real nice, like out the back in a, in a, little, uh, a little hot tub. And oh, yeah. It was a real like decked out, man. It had like three full size bedrooms. Oh, hell yeah. You know, two everybody had their own bathroom and um it was it was really cool. We were in like a little Jeep down there and yeah. uh we we went through this famous little man, I wish I could remember the name of it now. Um this famous little area. It's like a park. It's called I think it's called the Canyon of some maybe. But Jurassic Park, there was like a little clip it from Jurassic Park was filmed in that area. Oh yeah. And uh so that was so that was kind of interesting and when we went there we took a uh, little quad trip, you know, like uh, about maybe like 15 little, little caravan of quads uh-huh. going down all the trails and they actually uh had marking signs as we were going through this big valley. Beautiful, you know. The, I can't even describe it, you oh, know, yeah. but they uh they had little markings of where they were going to film Jumanji. Like the newer, mm-hmm. you know, the newer second like remake of Jumanji was, uh, yeah. was uh, filmed in there, and I think we actually came I in contact. The Rock and uh, Kevin Hart on Instagram. Yeah, you'd be seeing them out there recording. Yeah, yeah. straight up in Hawaii. Yeah, on that. Bastards. Yeah. But as we were out there, just uh, on a final here, we um, we ran into a like a little small like three caravan of like uh, some like uh, Yukon XL black blacked out. You know, and they just all kind of parked off to the side. You know, I think it was like some kind of film scouting oh, yeah. kind of little thing. And they're just kind of scouting the area with their lenses and shit. It was, it was pretty cool. Pretty oh, that was pretty see, cool. So. so what's your favorite place to dream about going? Wow. Back to Hawaii? Yeah. <laughs> There's nowhere else you thought you'd yeah, like to Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I want to spend the money or, the, or not, the time on the, sh- the on the time on the plane to like that shit. go that. to i mean i guess i guess if i wanted to like if see you could snap your fingers and be shit, somewhere else just like see some like crazy things i i have this want to see like the uh south america like uh, yeah. the uh, like the machu picchu and oh, yeah, you know, yeah. all the great little uh pyramid you know, structures down there and just to yeah. feel, just to see, like, man, I've been here and, you know, these things are like, what, 3,000 or more years old. Yeah. You know, it's just pretty wild to you yeah, know, think that cool. there was a civilization there. But, man, well, I don't know. It's kind of scary right it, now, right? Yeah, it keeps sounding like the, uh, <laughs> the date on the, the colonization of this part of the world keeps getting pushed further back. Because, you know, uh, originally yeah. they thought that there was, yeah. you know, that... There was nothing, nobody here before like thirteen thousand three hundred years ago. Sure. Now that they're they're pushing that pushing way back. Way they're, back. They're yeah. good, that, they, I've heard them push it back as far as a um, hundred thousand years. Yeah, I've heard in, in the uh, I've heard, Indian the in the like uh, Indian culture. 
Well, it was like the Indonesia, you know, not, not yeah, like well, Indian, people, not like native Indians. It'd be the the people who populated here would have been people who came from the you know Siberian Peninsula and shit like that. Sure. Yeah. And there's no telling how long they were there and spreading and with who knows. Yeah. I mean, that's you know we have such a vague picture of all that shit right now. Yeah. It's pretty interesting though. I'm like, yeah. well, obsessed they, with the shit. I the mean, biggest, you know, the but, biggest, you know, like. Well, I mean, I hate to sound cliche, but the uh, the pyramids, yeah. you know, the the ones in Giza are actually the youngest of all, of all the pyramids, you know. So, you know, they think the pyramids are maybe, you know, three to five thousand years old, yeah. and uh, they think the ones that like fucking in Machu Picchu is like like ten to fifteen. Yeah, I haven't years. heard that, but I know there's there's. Uh, for years, but you've been talking about the uh, Sphinx being like way older because the water, the uh, erosion patterns are consistent with rainfall and not with wind and sand erosion. So, but you know, there's oh, people that's pretty kind of heated debate between people on both sides of it. So, yeah, no one wants to dig into that. Uh, well, I just... you know, that the, the problem is we kind of all of us kind of tend to get this idea of how things are and then we're really resistant to that being challenged on that idea <laughs> so, yeah. and it's just some it's a what do they call that the um they call that something cognitive dissonance yeah like yeah. Uh, the tribal mentality you yeah know, everybody thinks that everybody thinks confirmation that confirmation bias and, yeah uh, everybody yeah. thinks that and, and you know your doctor thinks that so that's, yeah right it's, it's probably right <laughs> i guess right i mean what you have to remember is in the Throughout history, a majority of the time, a majority of the people have been wrong. So, absolutely, keep that in mind at all times, folks. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, let's see. Favorite place, uh, favorite favorite alcoholic drink. We went to the mm. real interesting, mm-hmm. dirty martini, dirty, hiding. extra dirty. I, you know, I appreciate that. <laughs> vodka drinks. <laughs> um, but I do. I you know I I I used to like a lot of good beers. Yeah, I still do like a lot of good beers. I just can't drink them as much. I feel like I, I don't know. I feel like I don't know. I just like I'm like yeah, man. I'm gonna drink. The, I'm gonna drink a fucking good beer, and I'd get through about two of them, just like bloated. And like, yeah, uh, you know what I mean. But uh-huh. I think uh, yeah, I don't know. I think the uh, obviously <laughs> the vodka is gonna do the job in one. You know, other than you know drinking a good beer in two or three so yeah but i mean when you drink good beers usually you only have to drink two or three right and to get a nice job little, usually a nice little yeah unless you want to get thrashed then sex usually <laughs> does right. it depending on what it is that's right i can get some of those imperial stouts that are like 10 percent alcohol three of those will get you pretty feeling pretty damn good it's true yeah very true faux show what's your favorite card game Uh, second favorite is Cards Against Humanity. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. The first one is uh, a game called Flux, which I can't find many people to play with me because it's total fucking Never even heard of it. nerd. Is it like magic? Uh, no, no, uh, no. It's uh, it's it's kind of fun. Um, the game could end abruptly, or you know, it could take forever. Uh, but th- I like the idea. So their thing is, is all their different, you can theme it, like one of them's Monty Python. Yeah. And then so, you know, if you get a, a certain card that has like the Monty Python Knights at the Round Table or something like that, and you have like the the minstrel, the minstrel wife or something, you know, then you win the game. Right. And that's all it takes to win a game real quick. Or you can do, you know, multiple ones because everybody, because the rules change every time you throw a card down. Oh, yeah. So it's really pretty, pretty cool, but... So they also so the, that was one of them, and then they have like two other ones. One's like a like a zombie themed, and it has its own thing, like Night yeah. of the Living Dead kind of quotes and stuff like that throughout uh-huh. it. But yeah, so I, I, it's, it's it's pretty cool. But yeah, yeah. that's yeah, check it out, Flux. Right on. <laughs> so, uh, what's your favorite mode of transportation? <sighs> you know, wow. I mean, I wish I could do more boating. Yeah. But I don't have the money for it. Yeah. So that's well, like, that's the problem we all have, isn't it? <laughs> so I actually have to drive my car to work every day. So that's my yeah. mode of transportation. Right on. But uh, yeah, I've never been. The, I've never been one to like. 
uh, like, damn, I want a brand new car. You know what I mean? I want to, yeah. I want to do, I want to drive a Corvette every day or something. You know what I mean? I just, the car, oh, my car has always been my second, like, least important thing. I mean, it's important. I've always had a car. I've always had a running car. I know yeah. how to keep them running, which is good. But it's just like, I'm not like. Hey guys, I'm pulling up in this thing. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, no, I got you. <laughs> I'm just getting in it to go to work. Yeah, you and just fucking need, go home, and I don't give a shit. It to do your shit, All right? But uh, I, you know, I I hate sticks, but I'm currently driving a stick. Yeah, I am too. I love it. You love it? Yeah, that yeah. car's fast though. It's yeah. really fast. Sticks it does get you out of some sticky situations. Sticks can. Yeah. You know, real quick. Yeah. They just get the For sure. they just slam it in there real quick. <laughs> yeah. Take off. Speed off really quick. Yep. Later. We'll see you later. So what's your favorite thing to complain about? Wow. I don't know. I haven't <laughs> complained about the fucking weather. I don't know. It's just like a, it's been a reoccurring thing this, yeah. this month. Right now. Yeah, the weather in Indiana but, sucks uh, in springtime. I don't know. I think it's the whole, uh, I don't know what I should complain about right now. Just, just shit in general. Like, yeah. Uh, there's plenty of shit to complain <laughs> there about, right? Plenty of shit. Yeah. I don't have a specific, specific, specific. God I can't even. You have to cut that. Yeah. No, that's fine. That's not a specific thing. Okay. So, so, so you got anything else you want to talk about? <sighs> I think that's about it. Yeah. I think we covered a lot of shit. Yeah, we did. So, uh, in in uh, closing, be prepared, motherfuckers. Absolutely. Like I said, uh, you can tweet me at Josh underscore Rhines on Twitter. You can find everyone's favorite show on the uh, Facebook and on Instagram and on YouTube. Everyone's favorite show. We'll be releasing content as often as humanly possible. And thanks for we'll, having me on. Hey, uh, thanks for coming. Babbling, lo- babbling away here. No, that's fine. You got anything else you want it. to say? Anything? No, that, I think it's it. Yeah. And where can they re- everybody find you on Twitter at Jason Barn? Jason Barn. All right, cool. Uh, thanks everybody for listening. I uh, hope you enjoy the show. Tweet me. You can email me at everyone's favorite show at gmail.com if you have any suggestions, questions, um, question, suggestions for questions for guests to ask about their favorite thing, whatever you want. Uh, thanks again for listening, and I hope that you will come again.